Hello my friends. Today we're solving a killer cage Sudoku by Philip Newman called Rattling Cages. On Killer Sudoku, we're placing the digits 1 through 9, once each in each row, each column, and each 3x3 three three region. We also have some cages in the grid, and each of these cages has a number written in the top left corner, and the numbers that go into the cage have to sum to whatever that clue in the top left corner is. So for instance, these two numbers sum to 3, so they can only be 1 and 2. These sum to 4, so they can only be 1 and 3. 6 could be either 1 and 5 or 2 and 4. 17 is always 8 and 9. 16 is always 7 and 9. 14 is 5 and 9 or 6 and 8. 24 in 3 cells is going to be 7, 8, and 9, which places a 7 here and makes this an 8, 9 pair. And because 7, 8, and 9 are already used in column 9, we're going to make that a 5, 6 pair. That's the only remaining way to do 11 without using a 7, an 8, or a 9. So that eliminates 5 from this cell, which makes it 2, 4. 6 and 3 cells is 1, 2, 3. That places a 3 here. And 9 without 1, 2, or 3 is 4, 5. And we're going to eliminate 5 from the 14 cage, making it 6, 8. 7 without a 1 or 2 is always going to be 3 and 4. And 12 without a 7 or 9 is always going to be 4 and 8. 5 here is some combination of 1 and 4 or 2 and 3. This cell in column 7 can't be 2 or 4, so that's 1 or 3, making this cell 2 or 4. This is going to be 6, 7, 8, or 9, and this guy cannot be 6 or 8, so that cannot be 7 or 9. Now an 8 with no 1 and no 3, there are three ways to make 8, 1 and 7, 3 and 5, and 2 and 6. So that has to be the 2, 6 option. That does a couple of things. That makes this a 4 and makes this a 1. And also, because 2 is already accounted for twice in the first two rows, we know we can't have another 2 in the first two rows, so that has to be a 6. And that takes care of those cages. Similarly, 13 with no 8 or 9 is 6, 7. And here we have two 8s, so we have a 6, 8, and an 8, 9. That accounts for the 8 in both of the final two rows, making this our 8 and placing a 4 there, which resolves this 4, 5 cage. And now at this point we have enough pencil marks that we can focus on classic Sudoku. So the 4, 8 makes this a 6 and makes this a 9. And so let's see if we can finish this up using classic Sudoku techniques. So here we have ones accounted for in both of the first two rows. So we can't put another one in the first two rows. There's also a one here, which sees this cell. So we're going to place our only possible one in this region there. Now let's look at these columns. So in column three, we've used a three, a four, a six, an eight, and a nine. So we need a one, a two, a five, and a seven. So we can eliminate 1 and 2 from here. We can eliminate 1, 2, and 7 from here, making it a 5 and resolving our 5, 7. Symmetrically here, we need a 3, a 5, an 8, and a 9 to finish this column. That can't be a 5. This can't be a 3, 8, or 9. So that's definitely going to be a 5. Yeah, and that can't be a 5, 8, or 9 now. So that will be a 3. So that's either an 8 or a 9. Now, where are we going to place a 1? In the bottom right region, it has to go right there. That makes this a 2, which makes this a 1, and makes this a 2. Okay, we also can place, I believe, a 9 right here because we've accounted for 9s in both of the bottom two rows. We're using this technique a lot in this puzzle, so we're going to place a 9 there in the bottom left region. That means our 9 in the top left region can only go into this position because 9 already sees all of these cells. So these are going to be 5, 6, and 8. There's already a 5 and 6 in row 2, so that's an 8. The 6 in row 3 gives us a 5 here, and now that's going to be a 6. These are going to be 3, 4, 8, and 9 to finish off the row, or not 8 and 9. Um, the 9 actually makes this an 8. These are going to be 3, 4, and 7 to finish off the row. There's a 3 in the region already, so there's going to be my 3. And I have a 4 in this column, so that will be a 7 and a 4. Here I need 5, 8, and 9 to finish the region, so that will be my 9, and now I have a 5, 8 pair. The 4 I placed a moment ago is going to resolve this, which is going to kind of bounce around and resolve the rest of the top of the grid. And these are going to be 3 and 9, which resolve because of the 8, 9 pair down here. Now I need 2, 4, and 5 to finish this region. 
and I can go ahead and do that based on the digits in the rows. Here I'm going to need a 1, a 3, and a 7 to finish the region. The only position for a 3 can't go in these cells, so it must go here. So these are going to be 1 and 7 in that order, because there's a 1 in that column already. That resolves the 7, 9. What a lovely symmetrical puzzle. 7's going to make this a 6. This is now a 1 to finish off the row. These are going to be 3 and 6. These will be 2 and 5 to finish the region. And just like up here, I can't quite resolve those yet, but we will get back around to them. I need a 6 and an 8 to finish this row. Or this column, actually. I need a 2 and a 4 to finish this column. I need to place a 3 in the region. It can only go there because there's a 3 here. This is going to be a 6. I need 7, 8, and 9 to finish the row. In this region, I'm going to need a 4 and a 7. Finish this with a 5, and that finally is going to take care of those two unresolved pairs that I've been sitting on for quite a while. And let's just place our last couple of digits and resolve this pencil marked pair, and there we go. That is how you solve Philip Newman's rattling cages. I hope you enjoyed that one. The link to solve it yourself is in the description below the puzzle, and I will see you again in three days.